the main picture shows an Eringo flower, the top right video an Izard, which is a type of deer, middle right is a copper butterfly, bottom right is a crossbill type of bird. Welcome to my wildlife watching vlog. This is about my trip to the Spanish side of the High Pyrenees in summer 2016. I visited midsummer, which is a good uh, mid to late summer, which is a good time to see things like butterflies, and there's lots of um, butterfly footage in this video. First of all, I went to Valle de Ara to the north and walked up the valley. So this was the view early in the morning as I left. I saw a Pyrenean Izard to the side of the path as I was walking. If you've been watching my other videos, this is less kind of chestnutty than the alpine chamois. And I think it looks a little bit more muscular and I think the horns look a little bit smaller as well. And the identification books and so on back that up. As I, as I went higher up the path, I saw this marmot sunbathing. And I also saw this coal tit or titmouse in a pine tree to the side of the path. And I also saw this fantastic warning sign. Not, I like to imagine what it might be telling you. Maybe the cows like pushing people off the side of the cliff. As I got higher, I saw, I knew I was in the mountains because I saw an Apollo butterfly, specialist mountain butterfly, very large, lots of fur, which I think might be to help it survive the colder temperatures and it takes many years for the caterpillars to grow large enough for the adult to appear because the summers are so short and so on. Anyway so now I'm going up right high up into the mountains above the trees and I saw some fantastic butterflies. I saw this heath fritillary or it's possibly a similar species and there's a marmot briefly calling in the background. This is a scarce copper. I'm saying they're fantastic butterflies. I probably need evidence for that. My evidence is that I really like seeing them. I think they're beautiful. For example, this scarce copper, wow. I mean, just look at that color. It's very windy. I was um, watching these butterflies in a little kind of protected spot. This is an Iolus blue. It was a protected area away from the wind, which is maybe why I got such good views of butterflies that day, because maybe all the butterflies were tending to drop down into these sections where it wasn't so windy. And then the next video clip, I'd been watching one Iolus Blue for a while, and I tried to predict where it was going to land next. Ta-da! Because I thought it would be a really good video clip, and then I realised it's not actually a very useful video clip at all. But then I thought I'd stick it in anyway and talk about it. I, I do enjoy butterfly watching, which definitely helps me enjoy my time every time I visit the Pyrenees. Although, to be honest, there's so much other stuff to see as well, you don't just have to be into butterflies. This is a dark green fritillary. Unlike, say, the high brown fritillary, it's lacking the extra spots, and there's a reason it's not neob fritillary, and I can't remember what it is. I'm going to call this a mountain ringlet. There's lots of brown butterflies like this with the orange spots in the upper wing which are all types of ringlet oh and by the way it's on a scabious flower but I don't I'm not sure exactly which species they can be very very difficult to tell apart they have a lot of variability this is a silver washed fritillary and we're going to finish off in a moment here we go with a chalk hill blue So those are the highlights from my walk up the valley to the north. My next walk, I headed kind of northeast, which I've called the Walk to France. By the way, this map is from my blog and also my book. Check out the link in the description. Anyway, so I headed up. Um, it was a steep climb and eventually ended up in France. It's a little bit of a saddle, so it's not as much as a climb as it would have been. And the path even passes through areas like this that we can see here in this photo. And this is a close-up of the rock, in case you're wondering, why are bearded vultures brown underneath? 
maybe that's a question you've been asking. The reason is because they rub themselves in the kind of iron bearing rocks. This is a bright eyed ringlet. I managed to work out which species of ringlet this was. Now we're going to see a video of immature wheat ear. I don't usually get such a close video of a wheat ear. I'm guessing that because this was an immature, it wasn't so wary of me. Definitely makes me feel like I'm in the Pyrenees to see one of these. I see them a lot when I when I visit either the French or the Spanish side. And we're going to see a crag martin nest. We're going to see 30 seconds in the life of a crag martin baby. Check it out. I think all they need is a TV to watch, and then that's um, maybe not dissimilar to some human babies. Anyway, um, I also went along the tourist trail, which was my least favourite walk here, and yet it's the most popular one, because people tend to go here because it's below these famous cliffs. But because you're below the cliffs, you can't really see them. Although there is a fantastic view towards the end of this, the, this popular tourist walk, where it opens out into a cirque, and you can continue around. So it is a nice walk. But I definitely recommend the other walks first. And if you've, if you've got the legs for it, if you can get up Taller Viewpoint, which is to the east of Taller, there's an amazing view, including a view of the um, famous cliffs. Thanks for watching my video. There's going to be another view, and then there's going to be a video of some crossbill that I saw as I was coming back down from Taller Viewpoint in the pine trees.